Hello! In tonight's Omar Vision tutorial, I'm gonna go over something you need to know in almost every game you make, and that's when two objects touch each other, collision. Alright? So in Unity, to detect a collision between two objects, you're gonna need two objects, game object A and game object B. Each of them must have a collider, and at least one of them has to have a rigid body. And then you could detect collisions between game object A and game object B. So let's see. I have a project here, and what I have put are two walls. All right, I have the first wall. If I select it, it's a game object, and it has a collider. All right, so that satisfies that I have a game object and a collider. This collider, I check the is trigger box for the collider. Then I have another brick wall where I don't check the is trigger box on the collider. Now, what I want to do is I want to do some tests. So I said I have to have two game objects. Here's two. These are going to be the walls that I'm going to crash into. But let's see what happens when I put another object in here. I'm going to put a sphere in the game. Now the sphere, right now, it just has a collider and its trigger thing is off. <coughs> Shit, what happened? What the trigger flag does on the collider is it kind of says if the collider is going to act like a physical obstacle or if you just want to know when something touches it. So, for example, here is a sphere. It has a collider. This is, um, there's a two walls. I'm going to press play and wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Before I press play on the sphere, I'm going to put a script on the sphere, which is this one here, the player collide script. So, let me put that on the sphere. That way we could, um, you know, read the collisions. Uh, it says it needs a text mesh because it's going to print whether it's touching or not in a little message above it. So let me just make a child object here of 3D text. And it's all blurry. So let me just increase the font size and decrease the character size. See, that way it looks nice and crispy. And it may be hard to see against the white. Just hold on. It's doing a little bit of um, management work there. Okay, so there we go. We got the hello world. So this is my debug text here. So let me just say text debug. Alright, so I'm going to have a sphere and I'm going to put this script on it that's going to tell me about the collisions that it has. It's going to print the collisions that it has and say what they are on this um, thing over here. If I look at the script, it's kind of easy. Basically, there's two different ways you could detect for a collision. You could actually check for the collision and the object has like a physical space where you can't go through the objects and you could check for the trigger event of two things touching each other. So remember over here where I said that I check the ish trigger. If um, one of the objects is a trigger, then you can go through it. Hmm? All right, so this wall is a trigger, and this wall is a solid wall, a collider. Then my ball, what is it? It's it's just a solid object. All right, so let's see. I'm going to press play, and <clears throat> now I'm going to move the ball to the trigger one, and it didn't work. Why? <laughs> Why didn't it not work? I want it to work right away. Let's find out. Let's see, let me just look at my rules, the three rules. At least one game object needs a rigid body. And I don't think there's a rigid body on the walls. Nope. And then on the player, the sphere, there's no rigid body. And that's why the collisions were not detected. The touching was not detected. At least one object must have a rigid body. So let me put a rigid body on the ball, okay? And I'll turn gravity off so that it's not, you know, going to drop. Let me press play again. And now I have a rigid body. Now if I touch the trigger wall, you can see that the script says that the sphere had the trigger stay with wall because right now the, the sphere is still touching the wall. So that's the stay event, the trigger stay event. Okay. Then when I come off the wall, that is the trigger exit event. Let me look in the console window here and let me clear these messages. <clears throat> so this is, this is the way the three events for a collision happen. I'm moving around and when I first touch the wall, that's trigger enter. I've entered the touch state. So here's the trigger enter. That one fires once. Now, as long as my ball is touching the wall, the trigger stay event continues to fire. You see how the number keeps going up until I get off the wall. And the moment I get off the wall, that is the trigger exit event. Okay, so that's what happened when I touched the wall that has a trigger. Let's see. Let me clear that. And now let's see what happens when I touch the wall that has a collider. So I touch the wall, but look, I can't, oh, I kind of shifted through the wall, but as I touch the wall, it doesn't go through the wall. It kind of just bounces into the wall, but it has the same series of events. When I first hit the wall, that's collision enter. When the ball is uh, continually touching the wall, like after it first hit it, that's collision stay. And then collision exit is when I come off the wall. So there's these three events. Now that's not so bad to understand. 
But sometimes we have events where we have situations where our game object is kind of like the a parent and there's children to it. So let's add some child objects to the sphere. I'll just add a cube as a one level deep child object. And let me just put it in front of the cube here. All right, and it's a child object as you can see here in the hierarchy window. The cube is a child of sphere. And the cube has a collider. And the parent object, the sphere, has a collider and a rigid body. Will the collision get detected on the script that's attached to sphere, or do I have to put a script on cube and talk to sphere? Let's see what happens. I'm going to press play. So I press play, and then when I touch the trigger wall, oh, we can see the event happens. I guess the event from the child object gets passed on to the parent, and see what the script is on the parent, and it displays the message. And then it does the exit as well, too. Let's see if it happens with the collision. Yep, same thing with the collision object. So the child objects pass on the collision trigger events up to the parent. Okay, let's see if that rule holds true if I have children going down to more than one level. So that's the cube is the first child. Then I have a second. And let's just make a third, duplicate. And this will be a child of that. So sphere is the parent. And then we have one, two, three levels of children down. And I just move you out there like that. Now let's see what happens if the sphere this is where the script is that displays the message. If it still gets the event, even though I have multiple children levels down, it works. It still passes the events. Yep, it still passes the events. And that's good because the children didn't even need a rigid body as long as the parent had one. All right, so that's good. So then I said, oh, this is great. So I have another uh, scene here. This was example one. When I was using game object from Unity, this rule seemed to hold and take effect. So then I said to myself, let me go ahead and make another scene where now I have a model from Mixamo, you know? And the model from Mixamo, Megan, has a lot of different parts. There's the body, the eyelashes, the hair. You know, it's a model made up of a bunch of different child objects. And more importantly, it's a model that has an armature on it, uh, you know, some bones, some rigs from Mixamo. So I got this model from Mixamo.com. And what this is here, these are a series of, um, this, it's armature rig is on, on this object. Let me save some space here. All right, so this is my scene. So what you can see here, uh, when I click the hips, this is kind of like where the hip bone is. And then child of the hip bones, I have the left leg and the right leg, you saw the two highlight. And then I have the spine, and I could go up her spine, let's see. And there's spine one, spine two. And then we have the left shoulder. And this is what I did, I went down the left shoulder there. I'll just make it closer so you can see. And then there's the arm. The arm bone starts there, and then the forearm bone starts there and then there is the hand and the hand has a bunch of bones for all the fingers but here on the hand level I put a collider a sphere collider on the hand level so say I could detect when this hand punches something and when the hand touches something that could be a punch if the animation is doing that but let's see what happens now when Megan that's the model's name has a collider on her hand if when this collider touches the walls see here's a sphere collider when it touches the trigger wall or the collide wall, if it passes up to the parent level, Megan, this is the script, the player collision script on her. See, and she still has also the debug text I put on top there. So let's see. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Okay, just checking the hand. Has the collider. All right, good. Um, let's see. Now I'm going to press play. And let me just go to the scene mode so I could move her around. So I'll select Megan. And let's try, see what happens when that, collider on our hand hits the trigger wall and nothing's happening if I look in the console window no events are coming off on Megan and how about this wall will it pass up the event no and funny thing is since it is a bone <clears throat> that bone that this is connected to it wouldn't go through the wall so it kind of just stretched her hand out all right so the collision events are not tracking up to the parent when I'm putting colliders on bones darn what am I gonna do well I guess I'll have to do it manually myself so what I did is I took the left hand and I made another script here. So let's see what I, the script I made here is um, collide pass up. All right. So on the left hand that has the collider, I'm going to put this script I made called collide pass up. And it wants to know what the parent script is. And that would be Megan. So let me just drag that there. Bam. And now this script knows what the parent object script is, Megan. And the reason I pass a script in is because if you look in the script, what I'm going to do is here in the collide pass up, it's going to detect these events, the on collision enter state, exit, enter or trigger state, exit and stuff like that. And then it's going to call the parent script 
and I made a function in parent script called hit collide. So I kind of just pass on this event and I call the parent script and tell it that I had this event I kind of made in a noon in the um, player collision script to say the event type. Then it has the parameter that was passed here. And just for the heck of it, I give it the name of this object. So if I look back to my parent script, the player collision script over here, we're going to see here I made the hit collide function. And these two functions are named hit collide. They're both public so that the other script can see them. And um, what's inside of them is basically um, I call the on collision enter of this player collision script and I just pass it the collision object, right? So I basically manually passed up the event myself since Unity, Unity wasn't doing it for me like it did when it was two Unity game objects. When I have a collider on a bone, it doesn't seem to do that, so I'm doing it myself. I call hit collide in my parent script and then it calls the event. So what's this one? Collision enter. And then on collision enter, you know, it displays that text message on the thing and it does it into the bug window. So let's see if this works where I have the collide pass up could register the events, and then it calls the parent to pass the event. Now, just in case I did not define the parent, I thought maybe there would be a problem here that I kind of I did forget to do that when I was like first coding this. So on the left hand, I have that collider. Here is the script, and it wants to know what the parent script is. In case I forget to say what the parent script is, this kind of checks for that, and it sets the parent script equal to um, the root parent of this whole game object. This is a function which just says, OK, what's your current transform? object. So get the parent of that and get the parent of that and get the parent. This is a recursive function over here to get to the parent. And anyway, first things first, let's check to see with this script on there if I could pass up the collision event to Megan, the parent script. So I'm going to press play and see if my, my uh, script that manually passes up the event works. So let's go to the scene view where I can move her. So here it goes to the trigger and it looks like it worked. See it says from the Mixamo left hand passed up to Megan I had the trigger stay event and it, coll it collided with the wall. And then over here is collision stay with the wall. So now the events are working, I passed them up. So this this was the uh, main purpose of this tutorial. And uh, now I guess what I could do is I could have her animate and when she punches, when that hand hits the wall, uh, if I use a trigger effect, it'll just go through the wall. And if I use the collision effect, you know, I don't check the is trigger on the collider. If I don't check that, then the hand will go through the wall. So, you know, it doesn't have to be the object that I'm touching that has the trigger thing set. It could be either or. If any of the objects that are colliding, any of the two objects is set to a trigger, it'll go through. It takes both objects to have the, um, the trigger off for it to have the effect of hitting the wall. Um, like I'll show you, for example, because, you know, this has the is trigger flag on. This one has it off. And right now, let's see what the hand has. It has it off. So if I turn, the, even though this is a, has the collider on, if I take Megan and turn this left hand trigger on, now the hand will be able to pass through this wall too. It just passes through the wall. As long as one of them is a trigger, then the whole collision effect is a trigger. It takes both of them to have the ish, to have the ish trigger off for it to like physically, you know, not let each other pass through. Okay, so that's just something to remember too. All right, I think that's enough for this tutorial. Thanks a lot for being with me tonight. See you next time. <clears throat> you made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects, and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.